Boom. Boom. We live. Dirty fucking Harris. Saucy Duke. What's up? What's up, dog? <laughs> dude, good to see you. You too, dude. Dude, first of all, I want to welcome you to, to my uh, my brand new setup here. Yeah, it looks good, dog. This it looks real good. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Um, like I was telling you earlier, I was like, all right, I'll just set the room up. It'll take me like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I was here for like fucking four hours just trying to make it look decent. Um, obviously, I wanted to, you know, to shoot the video and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but we've done, um, this podcast has been about 18 months into it now. And, um, you know, a lot of just kind of bullshit talking on the, on the show. I did a, a bunch of interviews in the past. And I was like, all right, this year I really want to get some interviews. And then me, me and you were talking the other day, and I was like, dude, you got to you got yeah. get on the show. Like, you have to be on the show. Yeah, I was like, please let me be on the show. Yeah, so you're here, man, so Thanks. welcome. Yeah, the setup looks good, dude. I really like you. You got the guitars back there. Showcase who you are and what you do, and it looks good, brother. Thanks, man. Yeah. So what's going on with you, man? What's uh, what's new in, uh, in fucking Saucy Loop? Yeah, world? yeah, man, so... Uh, uh, you know, I got, I'm doing a lot of farmer's markets right now. Finally got, you know, some good staff helping me out. Got a guy named Tom. He's been kicking butt for me. He's like one of my sales reps, helped me get new accounts, mm -hmm. which is awesome. I got a guy named, uh, Saucy John. He's been doing a lot of my farmer's markets. It lets me, you know, expand into getting, you know, more markets. So instead of just me doing like a Saturday, Sunday and a Friday, I can have him do a Saturday one, so it helps bring my revenue up, right. and just you know, it's been helping me all around, just get into more avenues, more, you know, streams for people to try the stuff. Yeah, because you know it's a it's it's good stuff, it's a consumable good, and it's, you know, it's that local stuff. So a lot of people too, you know, I'm one of the only guys out here hand making everything. So yeah. smoke my own chilies and make my own chili powder. It's like some craft, some crafty yeah. stuff. So what goes into doing that, like the hand, the hand. Part, you know, yeah, so, part. okay, so to get going on it, dude, I, I make my own chili powder. So, to kind of get how it started, dude, I, you know, I've always, I've always been all about, like, you know, working in your passion, dude. My whole thing is always find a way to do something where, you, yeah, you, we all gotta work, dude. We all gotta work. It'd be fucking sweet to fucking work and be doing something that I like doing. Right. So I've always, you know, I bartended for a while. I like working with people. Right. Bartending, you know, went straight into that. So I did that for a while. You know, did the career bartender thing. But fuck, dude, I was doing shit when my kids were young. This is in California. I was doing nine to ten shifts a week. So I'd do like five shifts at one place in the morning, and I would work. So like, say like ten to four, and then at fucking four thirty, I would start at the bar next door, and I would do the night shift there. Fuck. Yeah. So a lot of work, and I was just like, you know. I'm a, you know, I think it's time to get into management. So I right. got into management and then, uh, and then, yeah, so it kind of brought me over here, but, uh, you know, it, it working in your passion. So I started doing some, having fun doing it. I was like, hey, I like to barbecue. I'm going to do some barbecue competitions. And then, you know, when you do the competition, it's like, you, you, you know, you're stuck with someone else's sauce, someone else's rub. So the flavor is someone else's stuff. Right. So. Did a couple of those, had some fun with it, and then there was a chili competition. So got into the chili competition, and I followed this recipe, Alton Brown, dude. Really like Alton Brown, dude. He's doing really, really cool videos, big eccentric dude. Okay. So he went over how to make his chili powder first. So I won for best chili. So I took that chili powder. I was like, damn, I'm fucking, this chili powder is bomb. Right. Put it into the rubs, put it in the sauce, started placing better in competitions. The flavor was way up. I'm like, okay. So then that's how that kind of got started. But... Yeah, man, I take the chilies, dude, take three different chilies, smoke them on a big custom offset smoker. So smoke all the chilies, uh -huh. fucking bring the chilies down, dude, boom, 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 make the chili powder. So now I have a smoky flavor in the chili powder. So now I don't have to, I hate liquid smoke in, in barbecue stuff, dude. Like most barbecue sauces, you taste it, it finishes with that liquid smoke. To me, that's, that's artificial shit. Yeah. I'm smoking a fucking brisket 16 to 24 hours, dude. I don't want fucking, you know, I like a little bit of sauce on stuff. Sure. It tastes like artificial shit, so that's how this stuff kind of came about, and yeah, so that's kind of. So you have this it. marketed in uh, like some local uh, barbecue places, or like uh, I know what was it little? What's that chick's name that had the we did the festival for? Yep, yep, yep. So yep, Little Miss Butcher Lindsay right. up in yeah. Cape Creek. Yep, mm -hmm. I got it in uh, uh, District Forty Eight in in uh, Arrowhead Mall. So okay. I've been working well with them, dude. I'm actually gonna be doing a little collab coffee rub. They have a coffee. 
they have a coffee brand called District 48 Coffee, and I've been de designing some rubs to do a collab with them. Cool. So I'll be doing a coffee rub with them. You know, I'm in Off the Hook Meat Shop, Rusty Nail Meat Shop. I'm in, uh, what else am I in? I'm in Lee Bones Fine Meats in Glendale. Um, so you're in Chuck's Glendale, Butcher. Arrowhead, Peoria? Peoria, Mesa. Yep, Scottsdale. Yes, yeah, so all around. Cool. Yeah, so. Yeah, dude. So as it's been kind of coming up, you know, my focus this year too, because I was, you know, I got in business with a, with a partner and things just, just fell through. It was like, you know what, dude, this year I'm going to focus on the brand, come up with a couple new sauces, a couple new rubs, level up with the, uh, level up with the lineup. Right. And then uh, start doing some, some competitions, start doing more competitions, start doing, you know, vending my food at big barbecue fest. Right. So. I'll be in the Levine Barbecue Fest here. It's on the 26th of February. So I'll be a one of five food vendors for that. So that'll be rad. They That's got cool. over the 3,000 people coming. So they. 26th of February in Levine? In Levine, yeah, the Levine Barbecue Fest. Okay. So I'll be doing that. There's a rib fest in March I'll be doing. And then I'll be hosting my own at Corona Ranch. So this is all like happening right now, which right. is sweet, dude. Corona Ranch in Levine. Dude, this place. Is the shit, dude? It looks like Pablo Escobar's like fucking. It looks like his like Coke Lord house, bro. Like right. you come into it, dude. Boom! It has his own fucking rodeo, you know, verandas and stuff, dude. Bars, all yeah. Mexican style, dude. Huge grass, dude. It's awesome. Fountains and stuff. Like, yeah, that's gonna be fucking cool. Yeah, so, that's the one I'm playing at, right? Yep, yeah, that's the one you're playing at. Awesome. Fucking yeah, you're playing there. Fuck yeah. So we'll do uh, we'll do that there. You know, we did a couple barbecue t competitions that. You know, you were a part of, dude. Right. You fucking knocked it out of the park, yeah. yeah, dude. I'm like, I gotta get Ricky here. Hell yeah. Dude, I, I love how you roll through stuff. Um, well, I met you like three years ago. Yeah. And instantly became fucking friends, yeah. right? It's like, all right, we came over a few times. We did a couple guitar lessons, tried to figure that shit out, yeah. you know, and we hung out a few times. <laughs> and then uh, you're like, dude, I got this new adventure going on, but this is how I'm rolling. I need you to come down, you know, it's fucking, you know, I'm gonna do this, you know, I show up and there's tons of people there, you're cooking all this crazy fucking food and I'm playing music. I remember it was fucking raining the first one. Yeah. And I had me on the tarp. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I, I remember leaving there thinking, this dude just does whatever fuck, wh whatever comes in his mind, he's like, I'm gonna do it, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's, dude, there's a million people out there who, who just work every fucking day. And yeah. don't they, they turn off that 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 inner creativity because they're like, well, I just got to have a job and all that stuff. And you're like, nah, man, you got to go live and do what you want to do. Inspires me, bro. Yeah, yeah, thanks, dude. You know, I'm just, I just, in my time of like working for other people, I've realized that like their success has been because fucking I feel like I'm special. Right. I fucking like say like it is what right. it is, dude. I feel like I'm a little different. I right. feel like the, the effort I put into things. You know, people like it, dude. I like to create culture. I've been running restaurants, dude. I know how to create the culture and the vibe. Like, right. That's what I'm good at, dude. I know how to put myself out there and bring level up to here so that other people can come up and, like, you know, like, I'll throw myself out there. Right. Fucking look goofy. Whatever. Look goofy, but put myself out there so that so that you will a little bit, too. And once right. that kind of everybody's doing that, dude, everyone's having a little more fun because right. they're coming out of their comfort zone. Right. And, like, yeah. That, yeah, you know? yeah, because I think uh, in general people are they're, they're afraid to get judged right out of the gate, yeah. right? And they're afraid of you know people looking at them and go, look at this guy or look at this girl, look what she's wearing, because she didn't look at how he's acting, and and uh, people that have that ability that you have just they make other people go, well, oh, fuck, I wanna I wanna break out and be able to do whatever I want to <laughs> do. Do that too. Yeah, I want to be so I want to I want to feel free. I don't want to feel like I'm constrained or someone's gonna. You know, say, look at me funny, and then I'm all, you know, I shrink down. Because you see this shit happen all the time. And, um, you know, I, I, I dude, I, I said that the first time I fucking met you. I'm like, fucking, this fucking dude's a fucking animal. <laughs> I felt like that first time I met you. Yeah, I was like, like, I like fucking, this guy. Yeah, it's fucking cool shit. And uh, I, I think it's great, man. And it's inspiring. And it's, um, you know, I, I think about your efforts and then the stuff I'm doing, too. Because, you know, a lot of times it seems like it's like we're doing it. But a lot of times we're in our head a lot, right? get this shit going and it's gonna work you know you get those little voices in your head that yeah. like that knock on you and say, you can't do this motherfucker know, you ain't good enough shit. and you're like fuck you I can do it you yeah. know and if this fucking clown's doing it I can fucking do it or, yeah. or whatever you know um, and then that you get the ball rolling a little bit and then you're like okay you know and then and the, the cool thing is when you uh, come out of that you're like 
somehow you're just inspiring other people by doing yeah. what you want to do. And that's the whole point of living anyway. Because if you're not really impacting other people in a positive way, then what's the point of doing anything? Yeah, I hear I, that. I definitely feel like that's something you're doing. So, yeah. man. And this fucking sauce is good, dude. That muffin mm -hmm. sauce I just tasted. Thank you. I was like, I wish we had a way to cook some food right now. Dude, I, dude, I was eat. thinking about bringing something. See, yeah. The unquestionable flavor for questionable behavior. <laughs> <laughs> my new one, I just came out. I was like looking at the back of my car. I was like, we put the AF in craft barbecue. I was like, oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, the, all the savings are awesome. Yeah, thanks. But you know, the, you know, with doing this, it's all about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. My whole thing is like, even when I started doing certain things, right. is like, I feel like, you know, I like bite off more than I can chew right. and then somehow over deliver. It's like, dude, I'm just taking it in. I'm like, I'm going to do that. Right. And then I'm like, fuck, dude, I'm fucking scared. But you know what? I'm not going to, no one's going to know. I'm like, it's like bartending, dude. You're back there, dude. And someone's out there, da, 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 Bro, you cannot look frazzled. Right. You're like, oh, I got all these people to serve. I know how to do the job. Right. Okay. How can I do the job where they look like they're being taken care of and I'm not freaking out? Right. Boom. And then I, you know, I learned a skill like that right. where you're put in these big time situations where you're. You need it, it's go time, dude. Right. It's, you got to multitask. Got to get. You got to command the room. You got to have some fun doing it. Nah. You know. You got to find ways of like. Oh, you want this? Okay, you want that? Oh, you want a pina colada? Okay, you want that with it? Hey, just you know, but with the pina colada, yeah, there's some hooks under here if you want to hang your purse. All right, I'll be right back, guys. Right. Boom. Warm them all over. You know. Right. Dude, this is ways like do this. But yeah, bite off more than you can chew. Like an over deliver. Right. And have fun with it because yeah, yeah you got you gotta have fun with yeah. it. Yeah. If not, then. Fucking, what are it's we fucking, doing it for? It's good advice, man. I mean, wow. just to fucking live basic, basic shit, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, there's, and it's funny, you know, the older we get, right? How old are you now? 40. Just turned 40. Oh, fuck, you're young, dude. I'm going to be 50. <laughs> fuck. I can, hey, dude. Do you don't okay. have any gray in that much. I got a couple. I've been pulling them for hey, Yeah, I, you can't do it. <laughs> hey, dude, you got to pull out of hair, dog. But this yeah. conversation is receding, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, fuck, man. Um, yeah, I just feel like the the older I get now, um, I just want to be around people who just have that energy. Yeah, you know? I'm the same way, dude. I'm the same way. And you know what? That energy attracts other people who, who feel the same way. Yeah. Like, you know, as of lately, I mean, like, you know what? You know, there's some people, you know, in my life that have been in my life for a long time that, you know, don't always bring much to the table for me. Right. So why am I still hindering these friendships? Yeah, we, we got some, but they're just, I mean, I love them, care for them. They're just not always bringing all that much to the table for mm -hmm. me. Or they're like bringing me down or making me fall back in some of my old ways. Right. So fucking Saucy Luke's got some old ways. Right. You know what I mean? So Saucy Luke doesn't need to go back in those old ways. Right. I need to fucking keep staying right. on this. So, right. you know, I got, you know, four years of alcohol sobriety which is, you know, a big feat for, for me. So, you know, I need to... Yeah, that's a big time, dude. Congratulations Thank on that. Thank you. Four years. So you're, we were 36 when you started that? Yeah. Yeah, I do basic math. Yeah, dude. Yeah, 36, dude. You know, fuck, dude. Three DUIs later. Mm -hmm. Fucking, you know, shit, dude. Almost, yeah, I almost went out like Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. You know, and boss gag, so... Well, it's amazing how many people um, go through all that and they become like a casualty of life. I know. Like they just don't respond yeah. to it. They're like, oh, well, it was me. I fucked up. And then they just don't respond to it. And it's like, dude, that's the greatest thing that could have happened to you is, I know. is you fell flat on your fucking face. Yeah. Hell yeah. And now you're just going to get yourself up because yeah. all, all the greatest, all the, the stories that I, I ever heard that inspired me have always started with that same conversation. Like, the, you know, most people weren't born into it, into yeah. like having success. They were like, they, they, you know, they were struggling or trying to find who they were and, and all of a sudden it happened, you know, and just going for it. Trusting the, trusting the journey. Yeah, you know, I was, you know, fuck, dude. I was just like, fuck, dude, I'm about to crap out because of alcohol. That's what I felt like. I was going to crap out on life over fucking, you know, I'm like, fuck, dude, you got to get your shit together, bro. Like, get your shit together. Yeah. You got little girls. You got fucking, you know. Yeah. Bro, I always tell people my, my reality is different than other people's reality. Like, I got three DUIs. I got all these different things. Like, one more, I'm back in jail. I did a couple years in jail. It's like, my reality is different than yours, dude. Right. Like, I don't get a slap on the wrist anymore, dude. Right. You know, and there's things that I did, like, it's just, I just needed to, like, put that away. Right. Because it was always just, you know, I like to fucking go to bars, bro. I still go to bars, dude, right. all the time. Right. 
and just you know don't have to worry about the cops on the way home anymore. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Finding me at the scene of the crash. Right. <laughs> That's where they got me right. every time. Like, so, where where they catch you at the scene of the crash, bro? Right. <laughs> well, it seems like anytime um, people get um, they get over that little hump where they're like, oh, I'm 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 not boozing anymore. They kind of take up some crazy. Uh, adventure to get into some kind of adventure or something like that, or they fucking drive like you drive a motorcycle too, right? You got yeah. a couple Harleys, you have one Harley, or yeah, yep, two Harleys, two Harleys. I just yeah. sold my second one, so you just sold it, help fund some of the business, so yeah, yeah. Big adult decision. I was like, bro, I got two Harleys now, yeah, get rid of one. Uh, you only got one ass, you can only ride one at a time. <laughs> I like, look, it's like, it's nice to have the other one, but yeah, yeah I just got one, yeah. How long have you been riding bikes? Long time, long time, yeah, yeah so. 10 years yeah. but yeah yeah I uh I think about riding them mm -hmm. and then I'm like fuck that they're too big like when I saw yeah. you roll up that one day we remember ran into each other I can't remember uh, I can't remember what fuck happened you left your fucking credit card somewhere or I left my credit card somewhere maybe it was Saddle Mount Brewery or something oh like yeah, yeah, yeah 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 yep you rolled up on that big ass fucking yeah, bike yeah, and I'm looking right. at it I'm like there's no fucking way I want to fucking handle that thing that thing's like 500 pounds or 600 dude, it's pounds like almost 1000 pounds yeah fuck yeah. that no it's a beast yeah I'm not that well, it's you know, fun dude I'm I don't have enough ass dude my, my skinny <laughs> ass can't handle all that well that was another thing that I was the gift of not drinking anymore dude I was like dude I stopped riding cause fucking drunk all the time right. so it's like the risks were way too out there but I was like hey dude you stop drinking you give it a year you get the bike so that's that's like one of the gifts of myself because I still crave I mean I feel like if you're not sitting on the edge you're taking up too much space I right. do that with everything I like living on the edge I like right. feeling like that I like I like living a life like that so right. on those motorcycles you really, you know, if you're driving around in a car, you're going on a one hour ride, dude, you forget most of the ride or you're just like time travel from place to place, but you're on that motorcycle, you're like engaged in the moment, right. you know, and I enjoy that. Dude. Yeah. And I like, I mean, even in my drinking, I always like to take it to the edge, you know, so yeah. on the motorcycle, dude, I like, I like to have that butthole pucker every now and again, come around corners, dude, roost in it, dude, I, yeah. I enjoy that shit, yeah, like, right, I right. like that adrenaline, like, get your butthole pucker, bro. Well, you know. Uh, there's a saying, right? You ain't gonna live forever. You need to live in the moments, right? That's right. There's a lot of people sitting around, they're petrified of everything. And they ain't fucking I living. I know. It's super it's like, dude, sad. You know right you're gonna now. fucking, you're gonna end up in the fucking muck at some point, right? I mean, I don't care. Yeah, enjoy your life, you dude. Know, try, try to, you know, get after it, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe I'll get a bike at some point. Maybe I'll start with a scooter. You know, you don't need to. Tony Harris can't be a ring, ring, ring. Remember, uh, did you ever, let's see, when I was living in Jersey, mm -hmm. um, everyone had, like, if you were 15 years old, everyone had a fucking moped. Yeah, I had a moped. Did you? Fucking And there was, like, moped, moped gangs in Jersey, dude. Yeah. They would just drive around the street, no helmet, no, like, you could go anywhere you want on it. Yeah. I, dude, it's funny you say that. I don't want to cut you out, but okay. I had, I had, I got one of my grandpa's old mopeds and fucking, you know, I used to skateboard a lot, dude. So I had this pro tech green helmet and my whole thing, when I would ride around on that thing, if someone honked at me, like they knew me, I would always act like I was losing control to be like, <laughs> so I'd be like hey, it's so funny. Like dumb and dumber shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. my like, man, it's so funny. They're like, oh yeah, it's like, yeah, funny, gotta have fun with it. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. You're on a fucking moped. Let's be real. Yeah, it was great. what were they? Pooch? They called pooches or something like that. What were they called? Do you remember? The one my grandpa had to do was like it was called a cobra. Cobra. It was called the cobra. Uh -huh. But it's funny because like I, it didn't have so the uh, spark plug going. It didn't have a spark plug thing, uh -huh. so I had to like wire it around the spark plug. And sometimes it would come off when I'm riding. I'd have to put it back on there. Poof, I would Be get arced. like I would get arced and shocked. Oh shit! Yeah, dude, it was a lot of fun, dog. Yeah, time to do some sketches. Just over different, dude. I don't want to go execute it at all. <laughs> I remember uh, working on my, my uh, car when I was a kid. Now, I'm not very good at fucking mechanical shit, but, you know, living in Jersey, didn't have much money. My old man was, you know, he lived with me. He worked on cars, but he never never fucking told me how to do stuff. He would just come out and be like, Argh, and start doing shit, and then he'd disappear, and I'd be sitting out there by the car, be fucking cold out, you know, and he'd come back. And, you know, we used to change, like, the distributor cap and, you know, all that shit. And, uh -huh. And he'd be like, well, I need to check so you get spark. And I'm getting a car. And he'd be out there. And I could see him, like, through, like the hood be up, you know. And I could see his face fucking 
you know, with something, and I see Spark come up, and he bang his head, and he'd be like, all right, that's good. I'm like, what? <laughs> Being that's fucking good. Like, why are you electrocuting yourself? Yeah, I gotta test the Spark. Yeah, test, yeah, yeah. we gotta make sure I get Spark. I'm like, I saw him do that. I still don't want to do that. Yeah. I know he's still alive. You know, he was still alive then, but I was like, fuck that. I'm not fucking gonna electrocute myself to see if there's a Spark. That's funny you say that, because I just did a farmer's market over at Hidden Trails on a Friday, and they, um, you know, they got the guy selling the tasers. I was like, how bad, how bad are those tasers? He's like, they're fucking pretty good. I was like, fucking hit me with it. <laughs> He's like, I was like, bro, fucking hit me with it. Threw my arm up. <laughs> Gave a good jolt. I was yeah. like, yeah, that'll fucking practice up. Like, everyone's like, this boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, how you gonna know, right? Yeah, I'm dude, buying a shit. I like that shit. Yeah. yeah. I like that shit. Yeah. I mean, I'll test the battery. That's about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. do that. And I thought that was pretty savage, you know? You fucking let you your tongue. But you know, when I was a kid, um, I, mean, I was by myself a lot. Like before, my mom met my stepdad. We lived in a like a little apartment in New Jersey, and uh, I remember we had some Christmas decorations underneath. And uh, uh, Christmas de- oh yeah, Christmas I had the Christmas decorations underneath. You when you looked at the, when you looked at the yeah, camera, yeah, yeah, yeah. it made me think. Well, fuck, did I forget to turn something? No, no, on? no, no. I was bringing you back. See, yeah, I yeah. brought you back. Nice and team player. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, but we had these Christmas candles. Yeah. Like you put the little bulbs in there. Uh-huh. And I stuck it in the wall socket. And I was like five. And I stuck my tongue in it. Uh, uh, and I got electrocuted. Uh, you know. Yeah. And, and obviously I didn't fucking Wall socket in the fucking... No, I stuck the outlet. I, you know, oh, the yeah, yeah, there. yeah. And then, and then I got the candle and I was like... Uh, uh, <laughs> dirty the fucking ten, the fuck the fuck tongue tester. The dude, five-year-olds <laughs> shouldn't be by themselves at all. Oh, I used to fucking... Yeah, once I got that big jolt by putting like a butter knife in the thing, I was like, okay. Yeah. Now, I now respect that. I did it before. Right. I now do. I've never done that since then. No. But that's how I learned it. I learned everything in my life, dude. I try to tell my wife this about my kids because my kids got a lot of me in them, dude. Mm-hmm. Like... I, everything I've learned in life is the hard way. Right. And and growing up, I've like always just like, boom, learn it, and then try to turn it in. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been, I just finished a book called Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's oh, dude, it, it was, you know, told to me, hey, you should check this out. And I'm like, Matthew McConaughey? I was like, yeah, I've always kind of liked him, but I, but I read that book, dude. Yeah, it's right. Is it legit? It's really good. Really, I kind of thought it, the same thing about that guy. He's so yep. cool. Yeah. He's so fucking cool. It's like, you know, you're not even books. Come yeah. On. Dude, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it talks about his story, his upbringing coming up, mm-hmm. like how he got started, like, and he tells it truthfully and you see it's raw. Yeah. It's like real. So you're getting it from him and, and yeah, it's about like, you know, you know, catching green lights. So it's like when things happen in your life, dude, like that's a green light, you mm-hmm. know, you, you roll with it, you make it happen. Dude, but not all red lights, you know, red lights turn green. So sometimes right. you got to nurture a red light. Maybe it's not working right now, but that right. doesn't mean it has to be blown off. Dude, it could turn, right. you know, or, or something that's a yellow, it, you know, right. maybe it to red, but right. it may turn green again. So it's about keeping those relationships and, right. you know, not blowing things off or certain things. And, you know, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. That's dude. cool. I'll check yeah. that out. Now, did you, did you read it or did you do audio books? No, I do the audio book, too. Right? I fucking can't read, dude. I'll fall asleep. No. I got that bad. Dude, audio books are like a godsend because, uh, I mean, I know a ton of people who read mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, I read that in like a couple days. And then I'm like, oh, fuck did you sit there and read a book yeah. for a couple like I can't fucking sit still doing anything I can play my guitar that's about yeah. it but even then my mind's somewhere else and I'm playing you know it's kind of like yeah. uh, that's cool but but the audio books uh, especially now that I do this full time playing music in the mornings I got myself in a good little routine I, go, I do jiu jitsu now and all a couple days a oh, week time. and then I'm doing uh, you know I go to the gym do some yoga and I sit in the sauna a lot, and I got the headsets in, and I'm always listening. You know, I listen to all kinds of stuff. Like, I listen to, you know, some jiu-jitsu books, and, you know, with uh, Ray, uh, uh, one of the Gracie brothers. And um, But uh, the audiobooks, it's cool because, like, if you do kind of space out, like, there's been times I've been listening to that, and I'm like, yeah, this is in 10 minutes, and I have no idea what happened. I just hit hit back, you know, back. Yeah, back yeah, back. Bup, bup, bup. But yep. what happened to me when I was reading the book, I would just put the book down. I'm like, all right, I'm, a, I'm tired, I guess. I can't read, you know. Or I'll feel like I'll go through a couple pages. And I'm like, I don't fuck. I didn't process anything that no. I just read, and I'm like, right. Or I read, I get tired, dude. Yeah. Like I just ruin reading. My eyes fucking it's too much work, and I get tired. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna read this book, and then I'm like, oh. how did you? Did you go? How was your grades in school? Did you do pretty good? Yeah, I did good in school. You did? Yeah. Yeah, I did good in school. It it came to me easy. It came to me easy. I never really had to study. I was able to like you know retain things in class. Yeah. I didn't have to do much. 
you know, I just showed up. And, yeah. You know. So you're pretty present. You've always been a pretty present person. Yeah, right well, now. I found out in junior year, if you miss two classes, they don't call your parents until the third class. So I would miss first period and then th third period. Okay. And then the next day, I would miss second period and then fourth period. Uh -huh. So I, would, you know, I yeah. never had my parents called, right. but I still missed two classes. Right. And then I was also in leadership, so I was in, yeah. you know, I played sports too. Yeah, what did you I, play? So I played water polo and right. I played hockey. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, you played so, a fucking hockey player. Oh, fucking, I was the hockey goon, dude. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, like, hey, Luke, go get it. <laughs> Put so, me in. Never had a good slap shot. Always had a really good wrist shot. I was right. a good skater. Yeah. But I was never, you know, I'm an older brother. I was never scared, especially with a helmet and gloves on. I was never scared to take out the biggest dude, right. lay a hit on the biggest dude, right. or defend someone who, you know, on my team that was right. getting pummeled. So. Right. And I crave that shit. I like it, dude. Right. I, like, I like that stuff. That's so. the beauty of hockey, I think, um, because you got guys on the team that all have different roles. You yeah. got the thug guy, you know, who's the big brother of the team. Yeah. He's like, hey man, you know, don't don't fuck my little brother who scores all the goals yeah, for yeah, us yeah, because exactly. I'm gonna beat the fuck out of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I was I'm good. literally gonna beat the fuck yeah. out of you. <laughs> and uh, you know, my, my coach knows that, dude. Right. I'll be like, I would tell him, I'm like, bro, did you see number five, dude? He tried to trip our goalie. I was like, number five. He's like, you did? I'm like, yeah. Like, put me in, bro. <laughs> Boom, don't touch our goalie. Right. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah. Got to send a little message. With hockey, what's cool about hockey is it's all like, it's kind of like jail, dude. It's like managed within the people. Right. Like, yeah, the referee has a part in it, but like, it is really managed on the field. Right. You know, so it's one of the only sports that's like that. Yeah. And it puts it keeps everybody in check. Keeps everybody in check. You like, know. everybody, like, are you oh, going like, to talk shit? Are you going to act like an asshole? Then this well, is going to happen to you. You're going to have yeah. some consequences. And the ref knows that. Right. And like, dude, if I'm going to lay you out and make it two minutes in the freaking box. <laughs> I'll take the two minutes right. to freaking, you know, send a message. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You got to protect your guys. Yeah. And, you know, and that game's high speed, right? I mean, it isn't like you're running. You can fucking, I mean, you're probably running and skating, but if you're skating, I don't know how fast those guys are going, but I've been in a couple games. Those dudes are big yeah. and they move. Yeah. Like yeah. linebackers on ice skates, you know? And another thing with that game is the ref, a lot of the, the eyes is on the puck. So off the puck, bro, I mean, whap, hit you in the balls, dude. Off, nobody sees that shit, but boom, I look at you. You know, like, they're like, oh, shit. You know, yeah. you know it's, Like, it's, you know why I did that? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff you get away with. Yeah, yeah, the only time I really, really got hurt in the game of hockey was actually by a ref. <laughs> I had a guy fucking trip my, he tripped my goalie, uh -huh. and uh, he did another guy, tripped my goalie, and then, you know, I just tackled him, brought him to the ground, and then he kind of rolled over me, and then he threw his gloves off, so I got back on him. But as I, like, got on him, threw my gloves off, and of course, I'm here, I'm hitting his full on helmet I'm right. like hitting his helmet with my hands right. but I get tackled by the ref dude and the ref slid in with a knee to my inside bro <sighs> put me out uh, multiple games dude piss and blood on your left side on my left side dude which is a trip too because sometimes when I get really cold when I'm on the bike yeah. there's a weird tightness and I'm like, like that motherfucking ref holy, dude. <laughs> that you fucking ref, fucking ref <laughs> like I have to shit oh shit <laughs> I got a funny story about a ref too but it wasn't in the game we were uh uh, back east for a uh, one of my buddies getting married and they rented a bus we brought a fucking keg on the bus it was nice. a shit show nice. and then we you know, did all the strip clubs and and back there you'd bring it was like bring your own beer into the strip club you know mm. but one of the dudes that came onto the show or onto the show onto the bus um, had a, a black and white striped shirt on so my buddy Milk called him the ref <laughs> and, Milk, Shoot the zebra. and they all played hockey. Like I was the only guy to play hockey because I was a fucking hothead. Like I couldn't play the game. Yeah, right? Like yeah, yeah. You, fuck, you, you got a stick. It's like you first of all you got a weapon in your fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. hand, and oh, now you're sure. fucking slapping at me. Like yeah. I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. But they all played, <laughs> and uh, my buddy Milk, fucking hilarious. He's like kill the ref, and they all piled up on him. And this dude was like handling it, but they were. The oh, whole yeah. the whole night they were beating up on the yeah, ref because yeah, yeah. you know, he had a rough shirt on. Yeah, yeah, just because yeah. he had a rough shirt. And then what happened at the end? Did he? Not I don't really remember. Doesn't uh, matter. Yeah, but I just yeah, remember yeah. killed the ref, and it was a drunken, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. drunk fest. Oh yeah. I always yelled at a game as my brother played uh, basketball, and he was you know freshman year. He was, you know, varsity, mm. CIF champs. They kicked butt as a uh, y'all in uh, Chino Hills, but. Yeah, that was something I used to yell all the time if the ref wasn't doing it. I'd be like, shoot the zebra. Shoot the zebra <laughs> Just yeah. like when everyone's real quiet, shoot the zebra. Right. Get everybody rolling. Yeah, yeah. I like doing you got to have fun doing that shit. Dude, I go nuts. My son is a senior. He plays high school basketball. Yeah. And the, the team's struggling right now. He's, he, he plays like an animal. He does really well. But, um, 
I've lost my shit at the game so many times. Oh, and literally on the way home, I feel like I've been poisoned. Like I poisoned myself. For example, yesterday we lost the game yesterday. And um, before I went to the game, I was here setting up. Uh-huh. You know, I had a good workout, did yoga in the morning. I, uh-huh. My mind was all in the right place. I was like feeling creative. You know, I go to this game. I just felt all tense and shit. I'm like yelling yeah, at the refs and, you know, end up losing. Felt like shit on the way home. I'm like, fuck, man. Being a parent and watching your fucking kids compete at a high level game that's competitive where a lot of bullshit goes on. And, and at least hockey, like you said, there's some, you can equal, equal yeah, shit yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basketball, it's just shit talking and, yeah. you know, when, when the, you know, and this becomes ugly. And I was driving home. I was like, I felt like shit. I was like, damn, I gotta get better at that, man. I fucking hate when I let that shit ruin my day. Yeah. You know? Oh, I know. It took yeah, me about an hour to calm yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah, because you, know, you see stuff happening even to your kid, and you're just like, who the fuck is parent? Who's that parent? I, I mean, I do that right now. Yeah, yeah. Like, if something happens on the field, I'm like, who's your dad? Who's your yeah. dad? Bring your dad over here. I want to talk to your yeah. dad. Yeah, we'll see how your dad handles this. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> so, a, your kid did this and this and this. Like, what are you going to do to your kid? Nothing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're, now we're okay. Now we're good. Now yeah. I feel real bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, my wife's going, I can't hit him. Oh, yeah. Nah, nah, it's a problem. <laughs> this kid deserved it. I can hit the kid. She didn't like that no more though. Uh, everybody gets like, uh, you can't have a an argument with anybody anymore. Gets- dude, I've been having a lot of trouble too with like, I mean, like I said, dude, I learned everything the hard way. Mm-hmm. I mean, my parents didn't beat me, right? But they whooped my ass when I deserved it, right? And I, it's not like I ever feared my parents, but I didn't do that shit again because I didn't want to get a whooping, and it was wrong anyway, right? I'm just noticing today it's like, you know, something happens, you know, even, you know, say it happens to my kid and then it's just like, how do you feel about that? You're talking to the other kid. How? I'm like, dude, what do you mean? Like, grab him out by his ear, fucking put him over there, right? Like, I said that like exact, so I said almost shit, that exact thing, like, same thing yesterday. There's a, I mean, I've been, and I've been saying this for a year about this kid, so I don't talk, I mean, I like the kid, he's a nice kid, but um, at the end of the day, he is a, he's never had anyone jump him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh. jump his ass. Yeah. Like, really jump his ass. Yeah. My kid's been jumped. Like, they know, like, I'm cool. But yeah. when they know when I jump them, they, you know, they, they know. Yeah. Because I, I, you know. Yeah. There's a reason why yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm acting the way I'm acting, because you're fucking wrong, you know? Yeah. My dad always told me, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Yeah. And I remember as a kid being like, that's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. But then I think about it, like, when I got to, like, you know, school my kids, I'm like, fuck, dude, it does. It hurts yeah. me, but it's, it's. It's for you. Right. You know? It You're not is. doing them any favors yeah. by, and, oh, it's okay. And, dude, life is not easy, dude. Life is not easy. And to let these, you know, kids get through, like, everything. Nah, dude, it's hard. Right. And, you know, man, it's hard, and it ain't easy. So, you know what? Nothing's given to you. You're mm-hmm. going to have to earn it and, and deserve what you're given. And Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it can be a challenge. Where he's not, plus, I got two girls, bro. Yeah, bro. I, was, I, was, I got girls, bro. Are they in high school yet? No, man, they're 10 and 8, dude. They're 5th grade and... Oh, you got a whole... 5th and 3rd. Right. You're a young pup, baby. You still fifth got... 5th and 3rd, dude. I only got one kid in the house, and uh, my daughter lives on her own, and she lives in Tennessee. Yeah. She's got an apartment. She's got a real job. She's a big girl, dude. And... Uh, you worry about her all the time? Not so much, because um, she's not here. You know, when she first moved, I thought about it a lot, but then, you know, you get to the point where you're like... I was always there for my kids, you know? Yeah. And I, I gave them everything I could. And, yeah. And... and Everything I tell them, I always say, this is what's written on my heart. I'm not pl- I didn't read this somewhere. Yeah. What I'm telling you is what I this think is, is, real. is right. So yeah. you can decide if you like it or not. But this is what I'm going to tell you because this is what I'm supposed to tell you. Yeah. It's, it's all I know. Yeah. And um, so now that they're out, they're out on their own, I feel like, you know, they, they, they kind of know some of the truths. And, they, and they're, you know, they talk to their mom all the time. And, yeah. and she's fucking awesome. Yeah, I don't know how to fucking win and do it. It's awesome. Because when you when you're a dad, at some point, no, I can't, dude. I just like the same way. I'm like, like, how does my wife do all this stuff? Yeah, they take in a lot of shit. They do it a lot, and then just keep going and going. And I know sometimes when it's like wearing on her, but I'm like, fuck, dude, you wear you wear a lot of hats around here. Yeah. And the kids go to her, go to them, dude. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah, because they because they're better at talking to me. You're like, what? Like they come to me, I'm like, what? What's the problem? Yeah. I need to know what the fuck's going on so I can fix it for you real quick because I got shit to do. And my wife would sit there and just go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. She'll just listen. I'm like, how the fuck are you just listening? Yeah. They just fucked up. I didn't hear me. They <laughs> fucked up somewhere. <laughs> Fix that shit. Yeah. But then she'll, she'll go, like, the long route and yeah, really yeah. kind of you know, do it. And not, but thank God for, for fucking women, right? But yeah. dads have a big role. Like, you, your dads have to jump to shit. 
calm yeah. out, you know. And uh, there, I don't know if my kids are afraid of me, but there's like a healthy like um, respect or fear yeah. of you know of, of asking me something because you know I'm gonna call them out on bullshit yeah. if I think it's there. Even if it's not there, I'll call them out anyway. But what about this, dude? Does that are you thinking about anything like that, dude? Because yeah. Okay, that's what I would have been thinking. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like, dude. But I know what you're if thinking. If you're anything like it. me, you you are. Right. You guys are with my jeans, and you. This is where I would be at. Yeah. So absolutely. Don't bullshit a bullshitter, dude. There's uh -huh. liars and there's bullshitter. I'm a fucking bullshitter. Dog. I, you know, I know how to get in there, get in what I want. I'm hoping that motherfucking thing's recording. It is, dude. Yep, it is. Mm. It's counting down. That light's not on down there. Oh, down there. Hold on one second. Oh, audio, yeah. This fucking light right here isn't on. Dude, it's not on. It's not on? We didn't record any of that. Okay. All we got is the audio. So there's no video, but it's just audio? Yeah. But the video is being recorded on your phone. Yeah, but it's not It's not going through the proper oh, oh, thing. Oh, so not through that? Right. I'm not going to sweat it. We got the audio. You turn that on, though, now? Um, yeah, we can. Let's take a quick break. Yep.